If you think of all of the genes that we have in and on our bodies, we would be more than 99% microbial. We have more microbial cells than we do human cells. The weight of our gut microbes is roughly that of our brain. And as a neuroscientist, I find that very humbling. Hi, my name is John Crine and I'm a professor here in University College Cork in Ireland and as a neuroscientist I'm rethinking how nutrition is changing our brain and our behaviour through our microbes. The connections between our gut and our brain are quite varied. We understand it most in the context of how we uh, control our eating because everything about food control is is driven by uh, these gut brain signals our brain is able to tell us that we are hungry and therefore we can start the, the process of, of, of eating more recently a new player has really emerged and that is the wonderful world of the microbiome. We're beginning to really understand that these microbes, the trillions of bacteria and viruses, etc., that we have within our gut are really important for most aspects of our physiology. But what my lab has been interested in is how they're also playing a role in shaping our brain and our behavior. How can we know if the microbiome is involved in brain and behavior? When people want to know if something is important, what they do is they take it out and see what happens. Here in Cork, we've been very fortunate to have what's called a germ-free facility. This allows us to have mice grow up without microbes ever in their gut. Perhaps the most dramatic finding in these germ-free animals for us was the realization that normal social behavior is, is completely gone awry in the absence of microbes. In this experiment, we gave mice the opportunity to spend time with another mouse or a chamber, and mice are quite social, like humans, so they'll normally gravitate towards the social environment. But if they didn't have microbes in their gut, they didn't. Some of the key constructs underpinning our social interactions are dependent on microbes in the gut. Social behavior is at the heart of a variety of disorders like autism. It's also, we're studying it in the context of social anxiety disorder. It's very much important for schizophrenia. And all of these are now being imp are implicating the microbiome uh, in their overall uh, pathophysiology. But we're beginning to understand that there are a variety of factors that can negatively affect our microbiome and uh, they can be from the environment or they can be through stress, they can be through exposure to antibiotics, but also to what we eat. And um, many of the uh, aspects of our Western diet, the increase in processed food, sweeteners, emulsifiers, etc., have been shown to negatively impact the composition of the microbiome. Diversity is really important in all aspects of life, and diversity is really important for our microbiomes. What we're beginning to realize is how important nutrition is in driving this uh, diversity, and that we not only have a microbiome gut-brain axis, it's really a diet microbiome gut-brain axis. With that type of knowledge, we can flip things and look at, well, what's going to enrich our microbiome? What's going to increase diversity? Here in Cork, my colleague Ted Dynan and myself have come up with this term, psychobiotics. And psychobiotics are basically um, interventions that target our microbiome that will have positive effects on our mental health. We are often asked about what diets could be really beneficial for people who may be prone to suffering mild anxiety or depression. And while we need a lot more 
empirical data, what we can tell from both our animal studies and our studies in healthy volunteers and the way the field is going is that there are key components that we really know are, will be beneficial. Fibre is really important. Fermented foods really are really good for your microbiome and how it talks to the brain. There's been a lot of focus on, on um, omega-3 fatty acids from fish and, and that's a key component of the Mediterranean diet, for example. And then there are uh, nutritional components called polyphenols. Now, polyphenol might sound like a 1970s disco queen, but polyphenols are really important parts of um, a diet that give it color. Color is really good, and, and we're talking about natural colors, and they are really good uh, for our microbiome. It's not about creating a, an expensive product that's only available in, um, in, in, in health food stores. This can be done without a huge expense, and therefore we're hoping that this could be implemented as a preventative mechanism to help people who have busy, stressful lives deal with the stress in such a way. And so um, it was really exciting uh, for us to see.